Hey, good morning, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Happy Tuesday to every single one of you. Now, not only do we have the threat for the tornadoes again today, and they hit right where I showed you that they had a good potential to hit, today could be an outbreak. Plus, the update is running into the models of the data that I showed you that these storms could form up a hurricane by Mexico, spin up into the Gulf, spin up over to the southeast and the east coast. It's just a cold front is going to blow it all over the place. So remember, all the timestamps are in the description to help save you time. Make sure you share this information, guys. There is going to be a big storm for today. And make sure people know what's coming on with this hurricane season. We have outlooks for National Hurricane Center already. And make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you do everything you can to get this algorithm going. Because we have to show new people of what's going on today and what's coming soon. But thank you so much for your help, everybody. Y'all really make it happen. All I can do is give you the information. Y'all the ones that share it off to new people. Y'all do all the work. So thank you for your support. <laughs> Hope you have a very blessed day. God bless every single one of you. Now we had some tornadoes in the panhandle of Texas yesterday. And we also had some tornadoes in South Carolina. Mostly from quick spin-ups from Bowling Springs to a possible good tornado over in Spartanburg. The upstate. And this is a good picture that was put out on Twitter by Lori Mitt of the tornado that was in Texas. It was a beast. And this is a video that was put out by Storm Chaser 220 showing how intense this tornado got in Texas. Link in the description if you want to go watch the videos. And this is a video that was taken by Livestorms Media. Y'all know that I always support them. Their link to their channel is in every single video I do in the description. And this is a Texas tornado, of course. So the link will take you to Discovery Tornado. So you can go to the link in the description or go to Livestorms Media. Link in the description of my video and go watch it on their channel. A huge tornado. Plus, Imagine Shadows show the quick spin up that we had in Boiling Springs. All these videos are in the description so you can go watch them. And Brad Panovich at WX Brad did take this over for the Spartanburg area for the tornado that they had over around Chesney. So you can go watch this as well. Now for today, you will have thunderstorms in all of this green. You have a chance for tornadoes, a 2% on the coast of North Carolina, as well as a 2% and a 5%, which has raised up this morning for today. You will have some wind and you will have some hail as well. But your chances for tornadoes today, Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, Arlington, Texas, Plano, Texas, Garland, Texas. That is a 5%. The 2% also stretches to Houston, Texas. San Antonio, Texas, Austin, Texas, Memphis, Tennessee, and Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Now, they don't have the cities for North Carolina in there, but it also stretches out towards Wilmington, just east of Raleigh. You have a 2% there as well. And once again, as we look at helicity tracks to wind direction change with height, exactly what a tornado is, you can see right around 4 p.m., once again, we start getting some long-lived cells going to eastern New Mexico, going into northern Texas, and it goes all evening long. You get some very strong, long-lived cells. Could be some violent tornadoes out of all this pink. Now, this is a 48 hours, so we can see what's going on past 18 hours, and the difference is not as accurate as 18 hours. Of course, I've always told you all that, but just so we can see all the way up to 36 hours, all the way up to 1 p.m. for tomorrow. You can see we have some very long-lived cells, some possible violent tornadoes in this pink for Texas. And there will be a lot of long-lived cells, a lot of strong storms all evening, all night, and all morning for tomorrow. And you can see the difference here on the 18 hours. Just as we go into 2 p.m. and we go a little further all the way to 4 p.m., we start getting those long-lived cells going from eastern New Mexico going into northwestern Texas and as you go through the afternoon you can see you get those long-lived cells still showing up possible violent tornadoes for today and it's all the way to 8 p.m. also northern Mexico as well you got another threat for chances for tornadoes and as we go through the evening we only see so far with 18 hours but all the way to 10 and 11 o'clock is still pushing those just like we've seen on a 48 hours and the 48 hours shows it goes all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico as we try and get the best read all the way through it, we look on the 48 hours and we'll see these cells that is passing through the panhandle of Texas, as well as you still got the storms down here by Corpus Christi. And when you look at your shear, you can see them cells are getting a lot of shear on them, as well as the ones down here by Corpus Christi. So as you go through your afternoon, these cells will burst up even more. Then you'll get that big curve of rain bands all afternoon long 
coming all the way from New Mexico, coming all the way to Texas. And as far as the shear goes, you can see the shear in them. And this shear is all going to burst downwards as this grows throughout the day. So there is going to be some chances for some damage and winds, but there's definitely going to be some chances for tornadoes with this today. So here we go at two, three, four o'clock. Start getting these big nasty cells definitely by five. You see all the purple in there that has a lot of precipitation in those. You also have a nasty little line of shear coming with this. You also have a lot of winds coming with this. So it will be rain wrapped the ones that come so you will not see these tornadoes when they come it will be full of rain a big wind burst will be right behind it and as you go all evening long all the way to six seven eight o'clock you can see it goes towards the dfw and these have shear on them as well all this has a chance to be one big long supercell straight line winds damaging winds i'm showing high winds and as you go to nine ten o'clock at night it just keeps going all night long this is all the way to midnight so right around 10 and 11, it starts dissipating. You can see that with the precipitation color. You still have some different forms of storms coming with it from the south and from the north. But when you look at the shear, you can see it's still getting that shear all night long in those storms. This is all the way to 3 o'clock for tomorrow. Still bursting downwards. And it still carries all the way to Louisiana with that line as well. All the way to Shreveport. You have chances for tornadoes as these cells come south. As this front line pushes to northern Louisiana, you can see the shear in these cells. So there is going to be chances for tornadoes all day, all evening, and into tomorrow morning as it pushes through eastern Texas and goes towards Louisiana as well. As that line pushes down southern Texas all the way to the Gulf of Mexico by tomorrow morning for Texas. And that does go through Louisiana, and as far as the shear goes, it does dissipate as you get to 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. But until then, these cells right here do have some nasty shear on them as it pushes through. But you can see how it dissipates with the shear. Still getting some winds behind it, but it's not as strong as the beginning. So definitely Shreveport, be aware for tornadoes for tomorrow morning. And you do get these storms going into New Orleans as well. But it's not getting a shear anymore on these storms. It's just going to be a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of lightning. You see how you got this very light shear on these cells strong enough still but by seven o'clock that all dissipates and starts weakening with the shear so it will be just a lot of storms after seven or eight o'clock in the morning but guys y'all really need to be aware of this because this is going all night long all afternoon all night and all morning now in north carolina you do get some nasty little cells that comes through all morning long and into the afternoon get some good kidney bean shapes on them as well and you look at the shear, you do get a little bit of shear on that one as you go towards noontime, right before it goes off into the ocean. So it could be a spin up or a real quick spin up right around the coast, right around noontime for today. Just be aware, you do have some cells passing through and that one does have a nasty little kidney bean shape to it. You have more storms after that, but you don't have the shear that you need to get to rotation with those. And it's not going to be a lot of winds where you're going to get uh, speed shear. This will be directional shear and it will be just for a moment. But for New Mexico, you start getting into the 50 miles per hour wind gusts as you get to 5 and 6 p.m. for Texas. It changes into 60 miles per hour wind gusts with these cells. You even get some pockets of 70 in those brown right there as it goes through 11 o'clock and midnight. So just be aware y'all have some damaging winds coming with this storm. Potential for a tornado outbreak for all of Texas and carrying into the early morning for Shreveport, Louisiana. With some chances for 40 and possible low 50 miles per hour wind gusts. The biggest majority is going to be for Texas today. Please share this information and help alert Texas to what's going on. And you also still have that big threat for flash flooding. For today, you have marginal in the green, slight risk in all of this yellow. For tomorrow, for Wednesday, this is going to carry over even further where you have now a moderate section for western Tennessee. You have all this marginal as this system goes up to the upper Midwest. And you have this big slight area risk and this moderate risk right here for Wednesday. Just be aware for that. And Thursday is going to push even further over. We have a big marginal all the way to the Ohio Valley and another slight area risk for flash flooding. But as we look at the precipitation, the total rainfall, according to National Weather Service, as you go all evening long, it really builds up to two and three inches of rainfall, especially for Kansas, Oklahoma, and northern Texas over by the DFW. As you go into tomorrow, this will spread even more 
all the way to Thursday morning. Then it's going to keep carrying over, guys, all the way to Thursday evening. Big area of two to almost three inches of rainfall. And this is by National Weather Service with one inch plus carrying up to the upper Midwest. I know a lot of y'all do need rainfall and that's a good thing. I'm just a little worried about the places that's been in drought for so long. Your ground is hard and this will not sink into the soil quick enough because it's too hard and it will create flash flooding just like it's falling on hard cement. So just be aware you do have a lot of rainfall coming. And it is going towards North Carolina and Virginia and Southern Maryland a little bit as well. So you do have some rainfall coming for y'all as well. And our update on the tropics, you can see how we still have this big energy flowing over here on the Eastern Pacific side. We still have our wave moving over here from the Central America and this will continue to move West Northwest. We still have another wave coming in over here by Eastern Caribbean. All of it is not looking so hot because of that dust still. And we still have more coming off the coast of Africa. So I will keep you updated every day. Make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Now, so far, National Hurricane Center has put out these disturbances for the Eastern Pacific. And we always showed it could be two over there that could form into one. I still show it could be two. But the first disturbance is 20% chance within the next five days and the next 48 hours. Disturbance two, it has 0% chance in 48 hours, but in the next five days, it has 60% chance. And I'm still showing this is the one, the energy, that's after it becomes a hurricane towards Mexico, a little east of Mexico City, more like by Acapulco still. If you didn't see that video from yesterday, I will link it in the top right corner. You'll see that white box. Make sure you click on it. This energy will be moving into the Gulf of Mexico by the Bay of Campeche. Now, after we get these cold fronts, it's going to be fighting and dancing around with these cold fronts. Now, I'm showing in multiple models that the data that I showed you yesterday is showing up for today. That this could go into the Gulf. It could dance around, be close to the Gulf. It could dance around to Western Caribbean, even go around to the East Coast of the U.S. And the data I'm showing today, which will be in the models tomorrow, maybe the day after, we'll see. The data I'm showing today is that it's starting to regroup right back again. Now, I took myself out so you can see, but you see that this storm does form up over by the eastern Pacific. Becomes a nice and strong hurricane all the way down to a 944. This is according to the GFS. Then after that, the energy moves into the Bay of Campeche. And after that, it possibly forms up right along the coast, the western side of the Gulf of Mexico. While we could get a potential outburst of this one flowing over the Bahamas, and go into the east coast of the U.S. Now, there's going to be a bunch of energy rolling around, and this is going to teleport and move around by getting torn apart by the cold fronts over and over, and there's going to be multiple locations. Even shows after this does this, that you could get one by the Western Caribbean, even one right back into the Eastern Pacific again. This is going to be separated and flung around so much by these cold fronts, it really don't know what it's going to do yet with a chance still for a surface low and you still keep going you'll see that that will dance back towards the yucatan peninsula as well so not only is this energy coming through once this energy will come through a second time and the update with the euro shows that it still will stay weak and still become a hurricane so it is starting to agree with the other models that it will be stronger than it showed yesterday heading a little more to the west where it's going a little more towards possible mexico city as the energy goes into the Bay of Campeche, and that's where it starts to form up right there. Now the CMC, the GEM model, confirms that it will form up a cyclone and a possible double cyclone in the Eastern Pacific. First, you have the one going a little west of the Mexico City. Then you have the second one that forms up a little more to the east. So there's a chance for possible two cyclones as well. And not only that, there's still that chance for a front-induced surface low to form up in the Gulf of Mexico. So we still have all these options available on the table. The cold front is just going to make this dance everywhere. And as I show you the update, I did wait for the 6Z to show you the update on the GFS. The 0Z and the 12Z is the best data. But it does confirm that we still get that hurricane going towards Mexico. It does still confirm that this energy does go into the Bay of Campeche and to the Gulf of Mexico. But at the same time, it shows that it could fling up and form right here where it's been showing so long ago. It is back again. And it still confirms that this will go into our Gulf on the eastern side, like I show you that that would be the biggest probability because of the trough and the steering winds. And it could not only form once, 
but it could be a second spin up as well right after that. So we still have things that we need to think about on this hurricane season, guys, because it is ramping up. Please share the video. And you can also see the update on the data on the potential velocity anomaly according to GFS that it might not be spinning up all over the place and it actually could form up really nice right at the end of May. And then after that, just keep trying and keep trying because of these cold fronts. And the Euro confirms as well that this is gonna hold together a little bit better, even a second one right around the 8th or 9th of June. So it has multiple possible cyclones, a lot of lift in the air. And then it's saying that maybe that dust could make it through after that sometime around the 15th through the 20th that we have this other plume of dust that's coming off of Africa that it actually could make it through and quiet it down again after this. But right after that, the MDR wakes up again right at the end of June and the beginning of July. And you can see this with your Arctic Oscillation showing your cold fronts according to the Euro. The update shows that it still comes down to the end of May with a nasty little cold front coming down and it is getting a trough. This is your North Atlantic Oscillation. Let's you know if you go on a high ridge or a deep trough and it is going into a trough into the south and southeast. Also with the GFS. GFS confirms that that is coming down at the end of May, but it's also confirming that it's going to come down again. So we're going to get these double cold fronts that's going to keep hitting these storms coming into the Gulf, coming near our country, and it's going to keep it at bay. But it is going to be a big fight. As well as the NAO, it shows that we are going into that trough at the beginning, the end of May, the beginning of June, also again around the 8th or 9th of June. This is a possibility. This part right here is too far to be accurate, but this is still happening. This cold front is still coming, which will help protect us, but at the same time, it's going to separate all this velocity of the storm and possibly put it into multiples and the mjo according to what's going on with the euro the update shows the same thing as we go towards the end of the month towards the beginning of june that we're going to start getting this cold air coming down to the south and the southeast and it could do a double bump like gfs is seeing so it shows that it does linger around for a while eight is your east coast seven is your west coast one is your mdr so this right here would be over your south and southeast with this curve. But when you look with the Euro, just a chance for a tropical depression. You see how we get that forming up by Mexico. But after that, it confirms this energy is going into the Bay of Campeche and spreading out. So what it's going to do after we get to the first through the third is still unknown. It is going towards the Bay of Campeche by multiple models. And as you look at this dust layer, look at the whole Atlantic Basin, you can see as it comes through, we still get all the dust shifting away, getting hit with this big high pressure of cold front that comes through, cold air. As the dust comes through, then all this precipitation starts bottling up towards the first, precipitation meets up with it as well, and we get another plume that comes off after this precipitation, so it won't be blocking that precipitation, and you can see you do get that spin right off the east coast that could go towards the Gulf of Mexico as well. So we have multiple things going on, guys. And you can see that shot a little better here. As you get your dust going, this is your NASA satellite. This is not the Euro. This is not the GFS. And as the dust goes through, all this precipitation starts coming through and it starts bottling up with a lot of precipitation. And the Central American Gyre it is known for making storms. It all it needs is some thunderstorms to feed into this low pressure spin that it creates, and that will create your big storm, as well as the precipitation off the east coast, spins around and goes towards the Gulf of Mexico, even possibly get a center right there. So we need to stay on top of this because the, the dust is not going to be in this second wave, guys, with all this dancing that's going to do with the cold fronts. But the good news, just like... Farmer's Almanac showed that it could be a possible tropical storm. They didn't say possible hurricane. It's because all these cold fronts is going to create all of this shear. So if anything does come through, it will be something weak. It will create some winds. It will create some heavy rainfall as well. And a lot of y'all do need a rainfall. But it, so far, it will not be a super hurricane strength. It will be a surface low that will get beat up by the, the winds from the shear and it will get sheared away and it could form up many different areas. It tries again in the Caribbean, still getting sheared away and it does move north. You see that? It does head north, but it stays very weak. 
barely even a tropical depression or a tropical storm. Very weak system. And that is by the 5th. So I'm still showing it's still possible for this to go into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Very weak, which is a good thing. As well as another one popping up. And that one's getting sheared as well. So one thing that it is creating by these cold fronts is creating a lot of wind shear. But the second one, when it pops in, goes into the Gulf. It has a little bit better of a chance as the shear lightens up. Because that's where we don't know if we're going to get that second cold front or not. The first one is pretty much a definite at this point. Now, I put this on high resolution rapid refresh for the full 14 hours. So you can see what's going on. You can see the hail cores in these storms. Time and date is always above my head in a corner on this. I got it going pretty slow as possible. Thank you all for your help helping informing others, not only for the hurricanes threat, the tropical storm threats, also for these tornadoes and damage and winds with hail as well. It is going to be a crazy week. Thank you all. God bless every single one of you. Now, I also want to pray for protection for every single one of you and your families. We all need it. Psalm 25. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yes, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses. For they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness' sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. Look upon mine affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. O oh, keep my soul, and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Amen. May God bless you all. May God keep you and your family safe for today. It is going to be some hectic storms, plus what we have coming. I will keep you updated. And remember, the new data shows that this will consolidate even better. So maybe we're not getting that second cold front. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for all your shares, alerting other people. That is such a great thing to do. Most, most of them don't even know what's coming until it's upon them. And remember, <laughs> all glory, all honor, all power does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father. And he will keep you safe.
He always has. And he always will. Have faith. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a very great and a very safe Tuesday.